Okay, I'll now call the regular afternoon meeting of council uh, to order. The first item is the adoption and receipt of the agenda items. Uh, Councillor Fox, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next items are the um, the adoption of the minutes, special meeting for budget purposes, January 16th, and the regular afternoon meeting, January 16th. Can I have a motion, Councillor Fox, second, Councillor Davis. Any errors or missions? All those in favor? Opposed? And carried. And a motion to resolve into special closed. The items on the agenda. And Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Davis, and I do want to add an intergov. So I'll add an intergov and Councillor Fox. Two legal. Two legal. Yes. Yeah, Two. Okay, and with those additions, all those. Okay. Oh, Councilor Davis, I didn't see. Did you want to add? Something? No. Okay. Okay. So with that, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. So we now move into special closed. Thank you. Our afternoon meeting of Township of Langley Council, and we move on along with our agenda. There are no presentations or delegations, uh, so we move directly to reports to Council, and the first one is F1. And that's the 217, 2017 draft budget homeless camp cleanup report 1707. There's a motion or recommended motion that council receive the information rela related to the preliminary draft operating budget. Could I have a motion, please? Council Arneson, second by Councilor Davis. And any I'm just gonna any discussion on on that? Okay, I'm just gonna go just mark absent Richter and Fox. Okay, no, oh, Fox is back. Okay, so with that, I'm going to call the vote on F1. That carries unanimously. Move on to F2, and it's the Agricultural Land Commission application number 100309, and that's at 22054 100th Avenue. Is there a motion, please, Council? Councillor Whitmarsh moves, Councillor Fox seconds. Discussion on F2. Wait for Councillor Richter to take her place. And mark her present. Okay, so we're on F2, and uh, it's been moved and seconded. And if there is any discussion, Councillor Richter, I'll just give you a second to catch up. It's the Agriculture Land Commission application. Okay, and I see no no discussion. I'm going to call the question on F2. How's the quality your button didn't? Oh, sorry. There we go. And that carries. Councilor Arneson, Councilor Davis opposed. And we want to F3. This is budget transfer, sanitary sewer system improvements. Can I have a motion, please? Um, Councillor Long, Councillor Sparrow. And discussion, questions on, oh, here we go. Councillor Arneson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you, then to staff. Uh, I'm wondering through this report, then, if um, there is any consideration when, if the existing pump station, which is 35 years old, <laughs> would be replaced, uh, what its functional life that's still left? Your Worship, these facilities, the, uh, the pump stations, etc., they have uh, a very long life lifespan, uh, exceeding 100 years or so. Uh, so there are no expectations to replace the pump station uh, okay. as a whole. Parts and pieces of it may be subject to, obviously, wear and tear, and they would have to be replaced from time to time. But the pump station itself is not uh, likely going to be replaced. Okay, thank you. I didn't know they had such longevity. And uh, secondarily then, I'm wondering, is Metro in any way responsible for any of the kind of costs for upgrades, or is that because it's related to air quality? Could we make that argument? Uh, Your Worship, the uh, pump station improvements are uh, the township's uh, system that have to be upgraded and uh, as outlined in the staff report, based on the requirements applicable at the time that the pump station went in, uh, 
that's how the pump station was actually constructed. So it would be difficult to hold another party accountable for something that is part of the municipal system, uh, despite their jurisdiction over air quality. So, okay. Uh, yeah. and, and just for yeah, uh, Metro Vancouver, if, uh, this is, if this is part of one of their systems, their um, um, waste yeah. system, then that would be theirs to fund. And air quality, they're regulator, they're, they regulate it. Uh, so it would be up to us still to fund it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thank you. Maybe a question through to staff is um, the first executive summary. It says, as the first paragraph, as can be seen, there are a number of different public, regional, and local, as well as private industry, potential sources of odors that have been identified. Um, why have we got that in there? Because if we've narrowed it down to the one leaky valve, that's um, because it's right. Um, it's, it says here they're associated, uh, including the air release valves. Um, that would be in the bottom uh, at 96. But really, if there's other potential sources, like uh, it, uh, why have we looked at them and said, well, maybe those guys, uh, yeah. Is there other, what other potential sources could there be? Your Worship, uh, through you to, to Councillor Davis, in general terms, there are three potential sources. One is the regional facility. That's the uh, sewage treatment plant that's operated by Metro Vancouver that's shown with the red, red square at the top there. The other is the municipal sewer system. That's the, the blue circles. And then the other ones are the black dots. Those are the private uh, businesses and industries in the area that could uh, generate emanate uh, odor. The green, so green we, triangles. Uh, green triangles. Sorry, the green triangles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, what is proposed at this point is is to go through a a, a process that uh, is one one of elimination and two one that we have control over. Uh, we have no real direct control over private businesses, uh, as you alluded to your, your worship earlier. It's a matter for Metro Vancouver to, to regulate. And then in terms of their facilities, they are responsible to make sure that their own facilities don't generate any order uh, that could be potentially uh, offensive. So what we're doing is addressing what we have control over. That's the, uh, the sanctuary sewer lift station. And the accessory part of that is the air valve that's uh, that's shown again with the blue circle uh, to the east. Okay, so I what, I don't understand if it's broken. Why do we have to run the? Wouldn't this be just a maintenance thing? Why do we? Ha it's a lot of money, but why do we have to come to council for this? Like if it's broken, fix it. Your worship, it's a question of funding. Uh, we're asking council to approve the budget uh, transfer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fox. Yes, thank you. And um, I certainly appreciate this uh, initiative. Um, I talk with Mr. Ho on a monthly basis about odor emanation uh, up in this area. We recently took a tour of this, the sewage treatment plant, the North Langley sewage treatment plant. They've gone to extensive uh, lengths in their renovation to mitigate odors. <laughs> The green dots that you see, or green triangles that you see, I mean, we know that uh, some of those, oh, some of the unique odors can emanate from them, Gully and Sons and a few others that are up there doing composting, mixing, and so on and so forth. But I think it's imperative that the township does take this initiative and uh, at least eliminate one other potential cause for odors in this area because depending on weather conditions, depending on uh, winds, uh, inversions, all those sorts of factors. Um, and I know Metro Vancouver is very aware of this area, very aware of, of any odor complaints that come in. We did have one in Jan earlier in January where a, a citizen made a complaint, but unfortunately that citizen didn't make the complaint to Metro Vancouver, they just complained to us. Um, but um, Mr. Ho is aware of that now and so i think this initiative is a real positive one thank you any further discussion seeing none i'll call the question on f3 that carries unanimously and
And now we move on to F4. This is the Tourism Langley Destination Marketing Organization Renewal. And uh, <clears throat> there is um, like the motion here. I think everyone's read it. Uh, could I have a mover, please? Councillor Fox, seconder. Councillor Qualley. Any discussion on F4? Uh, Councillor Richter. Um, the motion that we passed uh, in camera on January 16th, in which we subsequently released from in camera, said uh, specifically that council confirmed that upon approval of the Langley Tourism Board and membership of the list of things, that uh, we would be willing to renew the bylaw at that point in time. Now, my question is, the board has sent us a letter saying they're willing to put uh, a proposal forward to the membership, but the membership hasn't approved that proposal. So what happens if we go ahead with this and the membership at their 2017 meeting, AGM, does not vote in favor of giving us uh, the list of conditions that we've asked for? Mr. Beckin. Thank you, Your Worship. The, the overall generalized uh, statement is correct. The Tourism Board did not elect to have a special meeting. Instead, what they provided us with is a letter that's in your distribution package of today, dated, I think, January the 25th, that and now clearly indicates they're prepared to endorse um, or recommend to the, to the membership the changes we've suggested. Uh, that was our original request. When it was not complied with, we then strengthened our request. Um, at that point, then, the question arises, well, what happens if they don't come forward? And it's a very good question. The technical answer is we'll have passed a bylaw. That bylaw would likely have to remain in, a full, in full force and effect for at least one year. At that point, we would be able to rescind it. And why we would say that is because the province then through their process requires yearly updates. And if we were to remove our endorsement at that time, that means the whole matter would then um, not meet the technical requirements of the province and the money could not be collected. So that process gives us the comfort that there is a, a bridge here that, uh, that would work for us if the membership does not uh, so agree. Uh, the, the question then arises, well, what would be the future in that context? It would then mean starting up a brand new organization, probably with a year or so downtime, and going forward with the new organization um, as was originally contemplated, meaning that it would be a township-centric organization. So the bylaw that we're going to vote on later on this evening can be repealed then? Within and a year? Any bylaw can be repealed, which would deal with the collection, uh, but the real challenge is making sure that the licensing requirements are, are corrected or met. And right now, the province clearly has a process as outlined in these five points in terms of what must take place in terms of the plan and the adoption process. So with that background, um, the, these other points would fall as well, and I believe the province then would be required to, uh, to suspend uh, any sort of collection or tourism organization activities. Um, but again, that may take a year to work out. Okay, thank you. Councillor Qualley. Thank you. Um, I was at the meeting when Tourism Langley made the decision to proceed with our request. And um, in fairness to the board, they have no staff left at Tourism Langley. There is one contract employee left there. They had, even if the board wanted to um, call an extraordinary AGM, the, the board of volunteers is feeling um, a bit beaten down at the moment. They've been through a rather arduous process in the last few months. And so... Um, their ability to even pull together uh, an extraordinary AGM, I think, might have been something that they maybe couldn't have um, facilitated. So I think they're operating um, in the best faith possible. Uh, they've, they are doing everything they can to recognize the importance of the requests that we've made. And they did make the concession when they sent the letter back, acknowledging that they would be putting forward the recommendation to the board. So. Um, this is a volunteer board of directors that we're dealing with, and um, we have to just be cognizant of the fact that they haven't got any staff left at all over there. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Richter? Well, if the organization is that um, empty right now, uh, moving forward with keeping it going is... Is this going to be very problematic in terms of getting any kind of service from them? Because if they've got no staff, how are they going to get things done? Thank you. 
I know I wanted to make a comment, Councilor Qualley is um, on the list. I just want to say that I think uh, the, the Township of Lanning Council has made some requests. Uh, the board has acted in good faith and responded to our requests, and I think we need to act in good faith in that um, they will do everything they possibly can to maintain their organization. And uh, I certainly, uh, as Mr. Backen has pointed out, there are alternatives after, but I, I believe uh, that yeah, there may be some rebuilding, and I think they're looking forward to it as a board. Um, if they have to do some rebuilding, but um, certainly uh, they're acting in good faith, and I see that through this. Councillor Qualley. Thank you. One of the conditions that we um, asked for was that a council or a township rep was appointed to the hiring committee in the hiring of a new executive director. So the hiring process is well underway. Um, they have um, the job description written, and the hiring committee has uh, has moved forward with that. So every everything is. Uh, happening to continue to um, operate Tourism Langley and um, uh, Munn um, Bagri, one of the uh, staff at Tourism Langley, is scheduled to attend the Sport Tourism Conference. So they're doing everything they can to keep the organization running in the interim. And I think this is a really great opportunity to get a fresh start with fresh staff and a fresh executive director at Tourism Langley. And council, uh, Township Council will have a voice in that entire process. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, I'll, I'll call the question on F4. And that carries with Councillor Richter and Councillor Arneson opposed. And so we move on to F5. And this is the Open House and Public Consultation results of the draft 2017-2020 financial plan. And there's a motion to receive the report and uh, the consultation results and also uh, to direct staff to bring forward for consideration the 2017-2021 financial plan. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox moves. Councillor Arneson seconds. Uh, discussion on F5. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question on F5. Carries unanimously. And move on to minutes of committees. Uh, there's on H1, the Recreation, Culture, and Parks Advisory Committee. And so I'm going to, so we have, what do we have? Uh, recreation and seniors. So a motion to receive those Move. minutes. Councillor Qualley, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Uh, any discussion on receipt on under H1? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Yes, just receipt of, yeah. And so H1. That carries unanimously. So H2. There's a recommended motion from the Recreation, Culture, and Parks Advisory Committee that uh, Council endorse the 2017 work plan as presented in Attachment A. Could I have a motion on H2? Council Whitmarsh, second by Council Qualley. Um, any discussion on H2? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Okay. Council Fox. Carries unanimously. H3 is the Recreation, Culture, Parks, Advisory Committee recommend a motion that uh, the following committee members uh, be appointed to the Museum Advisory Group as outlined in their terms of reference, and that's Kay McComish and Kelly Holmes. So Councillor Fox, seconder. Councillor Qualley, discussion on H3. See none, call the question. Carries unanimously. Is there any other business? Councillor Richter. Um, yes, I have a question forward coming forward from the um, Ag Advisory uh, and Economic Development Committee. And the question is with regards to late applications. The committee, of course, um, had one of its members resign because of other uh, commitments that they'd taken on. And they're quite keen to try to get the membership back up to uh, full status. Uh, they're also um, very concerned about not having student support on the committee anymore. Uh, so they, they have made a recommendation that, I, that we'll be coming to council with the minutes at the next meeting. But uh, I'm wondering, is there a way that we could get additional members to these committees if the committees want to have additional members at this point in time? I believe we do have a policy. Mr. Backner, Ms. Bauer, if you could... Elaborate on the policy that's in place, and certainly council can make decisions. Um, I believe the council policy states that uh, if there is a res resignation, 
um, council could appoint someone from the uh, pool of people who applied that were not appointed. In this case, we did not have any uh, extra applications. There were no other applications. Uh, but it is a council policy, and if necessary, you could vary it. So we could, so if there was some interest, especially like I think we've done this in the past, the chair of the committee could bring forward to council. Yes, it would still be in the pur would be the purview of council right. to so appoint or not. It can still be done. So I'd, I would suggest, Council Rector, is the chair or co chair of that committee that if there is something that you could bring it forward to council. Okay, so, so we would need what a two thirds majority on council to approve adding. Or calling for. I don't believe we new would on a, on a policy decision to be 50. No, I don't believe on this. We need it. We'd need two thirds majority. It would just be a majority of council. Okay. All right. Well, I'll probably bring that up then when the minutes come to uh, to council at the next meeting. The other question. One 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 quick question of staff. If it's dealing with uh, with uh, personnel with names, would it be on a closed agenda, or an open agenda? The application itself would be dealt with and closed, closed and then released to open after. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, but they don't have a specific name. They just want permission to ask people to apply to fill the vacancy. Okay. At which point, we, if we accepted applications, we would bring them forward to a closed council meeting. Yeah, right. but if there are no, uh, like, I thought they had at this stage, they, they it's don't. it's a can we have permission to ask people to apply? I I think just based on what's been discussed here, you probably could bring that to them and say that if they had a name, it could come. Certainly, they could apply, and you could bring that to council in a closed meeting. I and think it would be up the, to council. the best way to interpret it would be that um, our process is not to advertise again, so we wouldn't be advertising again. But if names came forward, staff would bring them forward to yeah. you. Okay, so I'll pass that on to them. Uh, the other question that they had was with regards to um, uh, student support for various uh, projects. Uh, for example, the committee is in the process of um, developing its work plan. Uh, for council approval. And some of the ac activities that they wanted to look at included um, uh, agritourism, putting together some sort of a tourism in in inventory, um, businesses that promote buy local. So these are very uh, um, clerically based type activities and they were wondering about getting students, uh, co-op students, or uh, student support to help the um, the staff support to the committees to do those. So I'm I recall having had a discussion around collective agreement provisions a while back. But is this something that um, staff could look into and let let us know about? Your Worship, I'd have to confirm, but my recollection is that the collective agreement doesn't provide the classifications necessary for interns or co-op students or summer students. That being said though, there is the option of looking at an auxiliary, uh, I guess, person hiring somebody as an auxiliary within the terms of the collective agreement and paying them in accordance with that. Usually the benefit from the students, the interns or the co-op students is a reduced rate of payment. I'm pretty confident that's not something we can do, but we could look at providing some auxiliary hours um, through people that may meet these criteria, being active students or recent graduates that could help the committees. That would simply be a budget issue in terms of what funds the division has available to fund the co uh, the, um, the uh, uh, auxiliary position. Okay, so the, the funding would have to come through to the department via the budget process, is that? And most departments do have a budget for auxiliaries as part of it. It's really a change of the workload or the priority from whatever the auxiliaries were originally doing to what this would be. And it may help staff. It depends on a case-by-case -case basis as to what we can free up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fox. Yeah, I'm just, shouldn't we be advertising? I think uh, Ms. Bauer mentioned uh, the advertising. If we've got vacancies and the committee wants to fill them, shouldn't we be giving everybody a fair chance rather than so, them selecting people? So, so Your Worship, the policy was we do not advertise when in fact we would wait till the next go-round because otherwise we're perpetually advertising. So the, the recommendation, I think, would be coming from the chair of people known to be interested so that we could actually bridge the gap until the next appointment season, which is uh, uh, sometime away, September, actually. I think that's how we've done it in the past. There have been some interested parties that have been brought forward or, as you said, applications that were um, didn't, didn't make it the first round. Yeah. So, Councillor Sparrow. Oh, I just have other businesses. Are yep, we on Yeah, still have other business. Yeah, it's here. Oh, okay. I just wanted to actually um, comment or 
commend staff. I, I hope it was staff that, w that has done it. Um, but as, as someone who's out running and now the snow has melted and the ice is gone, I can be back outside again. Um, in the Walnut Grove area, they have put additional street lights and in the area of where the crosswalk is. Um, I don't know if that was a program maybe done through BC Hydro or how, how that was done, but there's these, they've added these additional lights and um, it has made a huge difference for, I would very often almost get hit by cars when I would be out on my runs at night and uh, knock on wood, it hasn't happened for a bit now. And I think that that lighting has definitely made a big difference. So I just, I don't know if it's done throughout the township where those additional lights were added, but I know certainly in Walnut Grove that they have, um, at most of the intersections, added those additional little lights that kind of come off uh, that are directed to the crosswalk area, and it just has made a huge difference. So I just thought I wanted to mention that. I don't know if Mr. Seffi knows anything about that or not, but if you, it, you should just say yes, and it was all you're doing. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Seffi. For Thank you, Mr. Seffi. For yeah. installing all of those additional yes. lights. <laughs> Thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, motion to terminate. Councillor Davis, second by Councillor Long. All those in favour? Opposed, carried.